For those of you who don't know, I'm Daniela Pretorius, and there are two things which I fear more than death, getting old and mediocrity. At this point, people usually start rolling their eyes and comment on how cynical the youth of today is. However, I'm here today supported by fact, well, somewhat fact, to present why, the, sorry, to present why human nature almost rivals the very idea of aging or averageness. Getting old sucks. In case you haven't noticed, I'm not old, so accept this as a passive observation from the cynical youth, if you so wish. One of the most awful things about aging is the loneliness that always seems to follow it. You are leftover fragments of your own generation, awkwardly swept aside by today's quick-moving society. This loneliness and exclusion from society leads to a very bitter coating on the elderly, indeed. But I forgot to mention, you only end up the bitter, ugly person living across the street, the one that children so rarely cross if you let yourself. As is everything in life, you have control over your own emotions and your own path. You can choose to be friendless and isolated from the rest of the world, or you can choose to integrate and lead a fulfilling second half of your life. Too few choose the latter. To me, no matter how much it needs to happen and how vital it is to life on Earth, aging will always be an unnatural process. Your mind and body decay simultaneously, sometimes leaving a burden on your family and others around you. There's something so fragile with age, knowing that you're just looking at, the, at a reflection of a human being, the leftover of someone's prime 10, 20, 30 years ago. Now that is truly tragic. Someone who has already been through all of life's so-called milestones, graduating school, getting your first job, getting married, having kids, nauseatingly wholesome, I know. As you grow old, you begin to live your life through others. You take a back seat in your own life in order to give priority to those who have come after you. At the end of the day, the only fault which arises through this is through our own selfishness. After all, in a forest, there is not enough sunlight for all to thrive. Thus, large trees must fall. I grew tiresome of the social taboo, not to mention age, uh, not to mention the pain and suffering that age can bring. I grew bored of the need to conform to the political correctness to mention age other than to spew out glowing motivational chit chat. We have created a carpet of eggshells of which we continually struggle to walk around, all because we are too afraid of what might come. Just because you're different does not necessarily mean that you are useful or special. My favorite analogy for this is that not everyone can be a special snowflake. As if everyone is special, then is anyone really special at all? There's been a mentality on the rise, especially but understandably fed to young children, that they are unique and different from the rest of the seven billion people on Earth. They are inherently better and above everyone else. Sure, everyone wants to believe that their quirkiness, traits, or appearance is a beam of individualism. Well, it doesn't. <laughs> it's unfortunate to think that for most, what makes you, you, really just results in averageness. Averageness. We automatically link being average to boringness and living a dull life. This is also truly terrifying as we despise being average. In fact, most would rather live an incredibly unfortunate life rather than an average one as the unfortunate life will still be somewhat more spectacular. We need things to happen. The quicker, the better. Constantly filling our lives with events, no matter what the nature of those events are. What makes averageness even worse is the inability to see just how average you are. Complacency. The biggest mistake you could ever make in your life is to be complacent. Now, don't get me wrong. You not being complacent does not equate to you being greedy, nor does it mean that you're not satisfied. But by being complacent, you immediately cut off any goals to work towards. You lose drive and direction, and without drive and direction, there really is no point to life. Ooh, where am I? <laughs> Sorry. I dislike the overused cliche of being alive and not living, so I won't use it. But ladies and gentlemen, I will say that we cannot afford to drift. The way that of which we value ourselves has only begun to increase exponentially. We live in a competitive world. There will always be someone smarter, 
someone who's trained harder, and someone who will unforgivingly replace you. Our perspective on what human beings are able to do has only just begun to broaden. I'm here today in front of all of you with a requirement that I must spread an idea. I'm not here to convince you to change your life, nor am I here to tell you that you're living your life wrong in the first place. That is all down to perspective. All which I've talked about today are our fears which everyone will experience in varying degrees. You may agree with what I have to say, or you might not. And frankly, that does not affect the topics at hand. At this point in the speech, most people add in a well-suited quote and end on a clean slate. I just want to say that fate is in your hands. Mediocrity might, sorry, <laughs> getting old might be inevitable, but mediocrity might not be. So don't succumb to the darkness of our human fear. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.